Hey, how you doing? I'm well. I hope you are. I'm having a sip of coffee out of today's Anchor Hawk in the Dime Store Cup here. Waterford Waffle. Today's show is about Royal Ruby Red Glass from Anchor Hawking. But before we get into the story about that, I'd like to share with you an upcoming event tomorrow. My friend Charles will be here. Uh, we were out uh, on the trail yesterday uh, and we had a Candlewick Hall and uh, got a nice new selection. So I thought I'd do an update show of Candlewick and introduce you to my friend Charles who has been out on the uh, the trail with me uh, for the last 25 years and uh, we'll be sharing with you what we find. So today's pattern isn't a pattern at all, it's a color and it's royal ruby red and it was uh, patented by the Anchor Hocking Glass Company of Lancaster, Ohio in 1938 and that same year items were rolling off the production lines and into the stores. Uh, Anchor Hocking initially did not um, develop any new shapes to go with their newly patented glass color, but what they did was that they produced items in lines that they already had in production in their new color. Uh, public <clears throat> received the items well and they were popular and lots and lots of them were purchased. Uh, and things looked rosy for, uh, for Royal Ruby Red Glass. But in December of 1942, the United States went to war with Japan and Nazi Germany. And the government promptly cancelled licenses of chemicals. These chemicals were vital to the production of colors in glass and Anchor Hocking along with all other glass houses uh, had their licenses for the for the chemicals that produced the colored glasses they were revoked because the war effort required that any supplies be channeled to the war effort. What that meant for the glass producers was that when their current supplies of the chemicals that they had that they needed that were vital to produce the colors ran out so too did the production until the license that enabled them to buy the chemicals was reissued so for Ro for royal red ruby the lights went out really at the beginning of the second world war and the United States government did not start reissuing licenses for the chemicals until 1949. When it did, Anchor Hocking was ready and had two brand new lines, shapes that is, ready to introduce to the US retail public. Once again, uh, the patterns were, uh, the color was, uh, uh, enthusiastically responded to and uh, in in the mid 1950s Anchor Hocking uh, released the uh, 4000 number 4000 line uh, and uh, and it along with any other number of items from other uh, production lines uh, were showing up on the store shelves uh, uh, in Royal Ruby Red. Uh, the Florences tell us that this second production run of Royal Ruby Red ended uh, somewhere between 1964 and 1966. And then in 1973, the Anchor Hocking Corporation uh, commenced the third and what turned out to be the final production run of Royal Ruby and it would run until 1977 when it would end and that would be it forever. 
Over the years, millions of items of royal ruby red glass were produced by Anchor Hawking and distributed not only in the United States, but actually all over the world. Uh, we're focusing on America here because we've got to put a frame around our subject. Uh, but so there was a lot of it produced and obviously thousands and thousands of pieces have been broken over the years. But for anybody who's interested in collecting this color, uh, there's still a goodly supply out there and uh, one can amass a usable and functional set that will uh, set hearts uh, a fluttering uh, in the right environment today. So I'm actually going to share with you my collection of Royal Ruby and I'm going to do it in the order of, uh, of um, manufacture so that I'm gonna share with you items that I have from the initial offering in 1938 through the beginning of the Second World War. And then I'll show you uh, the collection. I'll share with you my collection of the 1950s, and then we'll run through the 1960s and the 1970s. So without further ado, here we go. And this item here is an old cafe pattern. It is a low mint tray, and there are the feet there. When we look on the underside, we can see there are three feet there. Central motif looks a little bit like a wagon wheel there, doesn't it? And then the panels running out from the center to the rim, we can see that it's shallow. It has tab handles there from the top and from the underside, they look pretty much the same. This measures eight inches in diameter and there it is, the old cafe low mint tray. The next item that I should like to share with you. Do you know what it is? What pattern this is? Can you guess that pattern? It's called Oyster and Pearl. And this is a little deep tab handled oyster and pearl bowl five and a quarter inches in diameter and stands two and a half inches tall an absolute million uses for that including uh, olives yes indeed the good old olive next i'd like to share with you this four inch, 10 ounce Windsor pattern tumbler. Nice art deco cubed design there, right from Windsor inside the rim. As I said, stands four inches tall, correct, and has a rim diameter of three and a quarter inches. You'll find the Royal Ruby Tumbler in a couple. I've seen it in a couple of sizes. I only have that one. I've seen uh, <clears throat> the original offering of uh, Royal Ruby Red was on, on seven uh, uh, lines that were currently in production. And I've shown you Old Cafe, Oyster and Pearl and Windsor. And the other four were Manhattan, Coronation, Sandwich, and Queen Mary. So you'll find Royal Red Ruby from the initial offering from 1938 that ran through the beginning of the Second World War on those seven lines. 
We then have a period, a, a, a lull. The the, uh, the glass color has a, a sleep while uh, while the war goes on. It wakes up in 1949 when. Uh, the United States government decides that it is going to reissue licenses for these chemicals and Anchor Hawking is ready to go with two new patterns in 1950, two new shapes in 1950 and then halfway through 19, the 1950s introduces yet another shape that was as well as being offered in other colored glasses offered in ruby red so i'm going to start to show you the first pattern is the squared pattern from the offering the pattern is called charm and it is a squared pattern with simple lines the corners are rounded and on the underside just one foot motif there that looks like a square sun with the, uh, the sunshine, all the rays going from the center sun there to the outside. This plate measures eight and a quarter inches in diameter. And just to uh, a quick comparison, the post-war patterns were so much simpler. They were just easier. Look, here we go. This one's all busy, busy with, with the pearls and, and <clears throat> the oysters and uh, the old cafe here got a bunch going on and uh, Windsor's got this uh, interest in, but uh, I mean, it's great to grip hold of if you have problems. Uh, with with sensation there are any number of uh of glassware lines that will actually help but the point that i make still stands uh after the second world war and into the 50s here 1950 the charm line as we will see is modern and simple let's look at something else here's the little dish we see this square little dish that same rayed sun on the bottom, squared, squared round corners. This little dish measures four and three quarters by four and three quarter inches. Yeah, and there it is. And next, here we go. Isn't this charming? It's a little charm cup and saucer. And there's that rounded, squared, modern, sleek shape with the squared rayed sun motif on the bottom and the seven ounce rounded, squared, flat cup. The handle is easy to use, easy to get your finger in. You could have a lumberjack to tea and uh, you wouldn't have slops. That's uh, a wonderful line there. And that is the squared charm line that was there, the modern. Uh, at around about the same time that charm was introduced, a second line was introduced. It may have been a little before and it may have been a little after. Uh, I think it really matters little, but I'm going to share what of it I have with you uh, and this is the first item here and this is a rounded pattern more traditional simplistic uh, just uh, you know uh, a utilitarian uh, this almost is like a slightly glamorous cousin of uh, of a diner plate you know looks like the family just had a few bucks Anyway, uh, this plate measures nine inches. Underside, no pattern at all. Uh, just a nice well. The underside isn't ground at all. Here's the Baltic cup and saucer. This, uh, this cup 
uh, is flat uh, like the charm cup right here, the squared calm, uh, charm cup. Uh, handles not unsimilar, but uh, chunkier. Uh, charm is daintier than Baltic. Uh, the Baltic cup actually holds an extra ounce, eight ounces, and they're well manufactured, and I've yet to meet a piece of this that actually wobbles. There's the saucer. Let me put the cup down and I can measure the diameter of the saucer for you, which is five and seven eighths inches. Yes, so there's the Baltic cup and saucer. Next, I should like to show you is this little footed stem or footed goblet. It holds two and a half ounces and I've seen it called a wine stem, and I've seen it called a cocktail. So I don't know what it is. It stands three and a half inches tall, and it holds two and a half ounces of liquid. You can put whatever you want in there that brings you joy. It has a rim diameter of two and a quarter inches. There's the underside. Absolutely no pattern. But we recognize ruby red by the color, indeed. So, as we pass from 1950 through 51, 52, 53, 54, uh, charm is being produced, as is Baltic. I don't know how much of what. It would seem to me that there's more Baltic out there than there is charm, but uh, we will revisit these lines and we will see what new information that we uncover. So, um, the charm, to, to collect a full set, there's about a dozen different items in the charm line. Right now, I'm not exactly sure how many different items make up the Baltic line. But the next line that I'd like to share with you, which is called Line 4000, it doesn't have a name. There's about a dozen items in this line also. And uh, this was introduced by Anchor Hawking in 1956. And uh, this is the sugar bowl. Uh, the way to recognize Line 4000 is this shoulder on the handle there. Uh, it looks like a shoulder pad there uh, on the on on the handle. And that, because otherwise you've just got a flat sugar with absolutely no decorative motifs. Uh, so, of course, we recognize Royal Ruby by its color. That's its fame. But also, uh, there are decorative motifs. They just they just don't shout at you like the older patterns do. This sugar stands two and seven eighths inches tall and has a rim diameter of three and a quarter inches. And to go along with the four thousand open handle flat sugar is the flat cream pitcher. There it is with the little nicked spout at the front there. There is the underside. And there's the handle with the shoulder padding right there. There it is. There we can see the mold line right there, completely two-part mold, stum there, together. Creamer stands three inches, yes. So the creamer is um, an eighth of an inch taller than the sugar. That's the creamer. So that there ends uh, the uh, 4,000 line, the Baltic line, 
and the charm line. And now I'm going to share with you some other items that are uh, whose production, uh, the next three items production is from that second run of 1950 through 1964, five, six. And then the last item that I'll share with you, uh, I pretty much am sure uh, comes from the 77 run and uh, you can make up your mind for yourself. But anyway, so the next item that I have that is a, a 1955 uh, offering, I believe, is this punch bowl base. It has three feet and I've seen any number of anchor hocking punch bowl bases and they all basically look the same and this is the generic shape for all of them they have three feet and an inner rim diameter in which the bowl sits all of these bowls look the same except that if there's going to be any pattern on the outside for example are uh, um sandwich pattern uh, that would be on the outside punch cups in royal ruby are footed and i think they hold six ounces i'll confirm that it could be five the inner rim here seems to be four and seven eighths inches uh i don't have a punch bowl to share with you and uh there's also a lot of people find it challenging to distinguish between punch bowls and actual salad bowls that were produced along the way. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Uh, this item is sta itself stands um, about one and one and five eighths inches. Oh, hang on. Let's take another look. Yeah, no, it stands one and a half inches tall. Yeah, so that's the punch bowl base. And the next thing that I'd like to share with you is this. And this is the Berwick Boopy. Uh, this item is half clear. The, uh, the stem and the foot are clear and the, uh, the bowl is royal ruby. This item is the champagne. It's a five ounce champagne or dessert sherbet cup. Uh, this item stands three and a half inches tall and has a rim diameter of three and three quarter inches. You will also find uh, that same item completely ruby red uh, as well as finding it completely clear. Uh, and you can mix and match these as you will. So our next and last item from the second production run is this bowl. It is has a scalloped or petaled rim. And I've seen this as a chip and a dip. And I've also seen this as the master berry in a berry bowl. There's the underside as a sort of a sun or a star. Under there has the petal rim. And there's the interior of this bowl. It stands three inches tall and is just absolutely beautiful so that's <clears throat> our third and last item from the second production run and the i'm going to share with you here my space shuttle souvenir plate from the kennedy space center and this plate was manufactured during the third production run, 73 to 77. 
and it ended up at NASA, who obviously had these plates specially manufactured by Anchor Hawking for their souvenir shop. Uh, I'm sure one of these eventually will show up with a with some sort of price tag on, even though I do understand that prices uh, will have changed and that the price tag that we find on the plate is only really the price tag for that plate at that time. But anyway, let's not get bogged down with it. Uh, eight inch plate, beautiful souvenir plate. We will, this is an example that tells you that Royal Ruby Red Glass was popular and people loved it and uh, it was used as souvenir wear. You will find Royal Ruby with different souvenir <laughs> motifs from different places that you could visit. Um, so that is my collection of Royal Ruby. Uh, I absolutely love it. And to be honest, as I may have said, I can't look at Royal Ruby without thinking of Christmas. Uh, it's just, it's a beautiful holiday pattern. And, uh, and I've been to uh, a few gatherings where it's been used and uh, it's just, it just enhances, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the theme and... Uh, and, and the scene that you're trying to set for your uh, for your event. Uh, I may be going to begin to start waffling, so I'm going to sign off. Remember, tomorrow Charles will be here and we're going to be sharing with you the Candlewick Hall from Oxford, Maine. Until then, take care of yourself and be nice to each other. Stroke the cat and good night. Thank you.